Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be creating galaxies. Galaxies are a really popular trend right now in creative art and so I thought I would show you how to create some galaxies when you're not a professional artist. I will have links to all of the supplies I use in the description and in my blog. We're going to start off with one of the most popular ways to create a galaxy which is through watercolor. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to watercolor so one of my tips is to use a uh, larger canvas, if you will. I'm using an eight and a half by 11 sheet of watercolor paper. And that way I paint the whole thing and whatever I like, I can trim down to keep it to that size. And whatever I don't like or whatever didn't turn out well, I can just discard. I started this watercolor painting by dropping in various shades of blues and purples. I wasn't too concerned about how they looked at the beginning um, because I knew I was going to go in and cover it up all with black watercolor paint. I'm going to set this piece aside to dry while I work on the other methods. Next up is a variation of watercoloring. It's watercoloring but using distress inks. Distress inks are really popular in the paper crafting world with mixed media and scrapbooking and card making. I'm using the same technique as I did before with a regular watercolor. I dropped in different shades of blues and purples and not really caring how hot mess it looks like right now because I know I was going to cover it up with some black distress ink watercolor anyway. I'm pretty comfortable with using distress inks which is why my sheet of watercolor paper is four and a quarter by five and a half. While both of the watercolor projects dry, we'll move on to the next technique of distress oxide ink blending. If you have watched my other videos, you know that I am an ink blending girl. I'm using the same color palette as before, but this time I'm not using watercolor paper. I'm using a smooth cardstock because the smooth cardstock allows for the ink to glide more easily, therefore it blends better. I'm using ink blending tools for this technique. If you don't have these tools for ink blending, I highly recommend them. They fit your hand nicely and they make blending a lot easier. This project should dry quickly as we move on to our next method. The fourth way of creating a galaxy involves using some good old fashioned acrylic paint. These are some cheapy acrylic paints I got off Amazon. As you can see here, I'm not very comfortable with acrylic paint either <laughs> because I'm using a Costco plate as my palette. And so I'm using a eight and a half by 11 sheet of black cardstock because I figured I wanted to see if this would save time in me covering the whole sheet if I just started off with a black foundation first. I really didn't have a plan for this galaxy. I just kind of go with it and then during the process I start zeroing in on a particular section I like. For example, it's this bottom left section that looks the best, the best of the worst I should say. So that's what I'm going to use later. While that dries, we will move on to marker ink smooshing. This technique is probably the messiest to do out of the five, but in terms of supplies, it's probably the easiest because you should have all these supplies um, somewhere around at home, or you can buy them for really cheap. What I'm doing is I took a scrap piece of transparency. You can also use a Ziploc bag, um, some plastic wrap even, and I'm smoosh, I'm just scribbling on some marker and then I spritzed it with some water and now I'm smooshing it on my sheet of paper. So the process is scribble, spritz, and then smoosh, and then repeat. This technique is certainly fun to do and you could probably have your kids join in on the fun as well. The only thing I recommend is laying down a craft mat like the one I have here because yeah, it is messy. I'm going to clean up a little before I add my black marker smoosh. The beauty of using Crayola markers is that it's washable, so I'm just using a baby wipe to clean that up really easily. And now I'm going to go in with my black marker, do some scribbles, and then spritz, and then smoosh. Smoosh, 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 smoosh. Um, the only thing, though, when I started doing the black marker is that it was really transparent. Like it was too transparent, you know, I wanted some more opaqueness to it. So I had to go in with multiple layers of black and uh, dark blue to touch this galaxy up. Now that my projects are dry, I'm going to go in and trim off the stuff that looks like crap. If you're an amateur like me, that's why I recommend painting on paper and not canvases. Trimming down paper is much easier than trimming down canvas. And just like that, with a few quick cuts, no one ever has to see the ugly parts of your artwork. Unless you've been watching this video for the past five minutes. 
Okay, let's see how these babies turned out. So first we have the regular watercolor. Um, it turned out nice, I think. And then <laughs> here's the Distressed Ink watercolor, which kind of turned out a little messy. If I were to do it again, I think I would have um, let it dry in between layers. The third one was the Distressed Oxide, and that one has a more chalky finish. The acrylic came out really bold. I was really surprised by that. And the fifth one, um, has a much more organic feel, if that makes sense, with the ink smushing. I like that one a lot too. I laid them all down on my craft mat because this next step is going to get really messy. So what I'm doing is I'm prepping my metallic-y, starry watercolors here and I'm using an acrylic block. I'm gonna do some flicking, some ink flicking. I wanna practice first on some regular copy paper to make sure that I get the motion and the, um, the right amount on. Using the acrylic block, helps me control the amount I put on there. Or so I thought. Big frigging blob. In the middle of all these tiny little stars. If anyone asks, it's a planet. It's a planet, okay? It's Pluto. All right, you can see the gist of this technique. It's flicking on um, white or silver paint for stars. You can put as many or as little amount of stars as you want. I think the more, the merrier which is why I'm going ham on all these stars. I'm gonna go in with a paper towel and try to fix up Pluto here, make sure he's a little less noticeable. Yeah, it's not really working. Oh well. We'll let this dry and come back and summarize. First up is the watercolor. Not bad, not bad. I think I would have made the um, washes a little bit smoother instead of having that harsh line there. Second is the Distress Ink watercolor. A little muddy, but it still works. Third is the Distress Oxide with Pluto. Yeah, I see you. Fourth up is the acrylic painting, which turned out really good. I think this is one of my favorites. It's definitely up there. And the fifth one is the marker ink smooshing, which turned out really well. It just took the most cleanup. Let me know in the comments which one you guys think turned out the best. And if you have any tips for creating galaxies for this non-artist over here. After you leave your comment, remember to hit subscribe button to let me know that you want to see more videos like this.